and welcome to us to G360. I'm your host, Dilbar Shatterson, and today I'd like to share with you stories of everyday Americans who have decided to give back to their communities by becoming a Tsuji volunteer. For many who are unfamiliar with the Tsuji Foundation, joining this group can be a curious choice. There's, of course, the uniform, the humble bow, but most prominent are the differences in language, culture, and spiritual philosophies. So in a melting pot like America, there are a lot of concerns when it comes to getting local support. In fact, in the book called Against All Odds, the authors pose this question. How can organizations incorporate separate racial, ethnic, and culture groups? What is the experience for people and groups in such organizations? In today's episode, you'll meet five volunteers who will help give some of those answers. So let's start in Southern California and meet Connie, who's building important bridges at the Medical Foundation. The USA has a population of 314 million. It consists mostly of Caucasians, African Americans, and Latinos. Asians form less than 5% of the population. The Tsuji Foundation faces an important challenge in inspiring its surrounding community toward charity. Welcome, Welcome to America! America. Welcome. The most difficult we face is about the language barrier. Tsuji originally from Taiwan, so most volunteers, they, um, they speak Mandarin Chinese, but for for them to go out to the community and share the information in English, it's a little bit challenging for them. When they come in, they were, they are volunteering, they wanted to participate, but then um, then all of a sudden, like all the groups is speaking in Chinese. <laughs> What are you saying? I don't... Ah. Connie was our patient in Wilmington about when we opened three years ago. And when she come here, she has her health problem. Uh, I met Dr. Uh, Wu. She was very good with me. Uh, I felt that I felt uh, her concern also. I know that a lot of my problems was because I was overweight. And then she just uh, suggested I eat more vegetables and, you know, try vegetarian, which I really don't all the time. I, uh, I do my best and uh, I come here a lot now to eat lunch, it's all vegetarian, so. And then she helps a lot in the clinic because uh, she speaks Spanish and we are in the Hispanic community, also uh, liaison to the community. Okay, Gloria. So last year, uh, during the Tima, we had a chance to invite her back to uh, Taiwan. Everything was a surprise to me, because I went blindfold. I was learning a lot of things. I didn't understand why everything was had to be uniformed and in line. I felt like a soldier. So after she come back, we told her that we have this training class. Since 2013, volunteers overcame obstacles in translation and manpower. They designed a series of training courses in English that allowed locals to experience the world of Tsuji. I like, I like what they do and how they do it. It's the spirit of, of sushi that they have there. And we have to learn first in order to go forward and help anybody. When we go out, uh, we, you can use the same language and they understand much, much better. What I do is, is part of, of uh, people knowing who I am because I've worked in the community for many years, and they know that I, I, I feel that they know that I can be trusted. Very naturally, you don't have to translate, she can just speak it, just from her heart. The message that Dharma has, and the message that, that, that Sushi has, it's, it's out there. What I've learned, I pass it on. I'm not keeping it just for me. I want everybody to feel like I feel, and be happy like I feel. Hopefully we can it make, really make a big impact in the Tsuji USA. And in the future, maybe we will see our CEO, the Tsuji USA CEO, not necessarily to be like Chinese book speaking. It will be truly American. My name is Connie Keldron. I'm a Mexican American and I'm also a Catholic, but I'm also a sushi volunteer. Connie's spirit mimics the same as many of Tsuji's aunties to keep going with unstoppable motivation, but at the same time, move forward with grace. Now we'll meet a Japanese volunteer who is doing something a little similar. And by trying to learn sign language, we'll see how he has put his mind, his heart, and his hands to work in an artistic way. 
told us so high. Are you lying? August is terrible high. Before joining Zuchi, my husband and I went to a Japanese temple for almost three years. At that time, Zuchi held a blood drive event. That's how I joined Zuchi. My husband didn't really like that since he was hoping we would practice Japanese Buddhism together. So I told him, you would understand what Zuchi is doing if you come in and take a look. I believe Master Chen says the same thing too. I'm going to volunteer. 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 I'm going In 2010, he started to get involved in the Eight Righteous Way Sign Language performance. It was very difficult in the sense that he has a language barrier. I tell him honestly, I don't understand what they say. <laughs> Even though Japanese and Chinese are somewhat similar, but for him, he spends a lot of time on overcoming the language barrier. Actually, I put in the computer and then do it. And then draw it. Draw? You can remember easier. Master says, to become professional, put your heart into it. He's doing the same with his chanting. Chinese language, it's, it's not easy to understand in chanting. But in the Black triangle is stop sound like a cock. This double circle is a big ring. So it's gone. I don't understand now, but maybe later take some word from there and then maybe I'm realized what the really meaning is. It sounds like hard works, but he has been able to overcome the roadblocks one by one. I'm so very proud of him. <笑>僕の願いはもう一人の人が仏様の教え世界平和の匂い願いに一緒に祈れるようになれたらいいなと思ってもう一人の人と思います。while Nakayama has worked hard to maneuver through Mandarin, there are other volunteers for whom this is a pretty tough mountain to climb. But while language learning is like opening a door to a new culture, is it a must to know Mandarin to truly understand Master Zhang Yan's missions and teachings? Let's see how volunteer Greg Chalowski and his wife are trying to cross that language bridge. And I remember my husband always asked me, where are you going? Who are these people? And are they cult? I say, uh, no, I don't think so. They told me to be a better person. After I chased my husband with a knife, okay, we actually had a couple fights. So I viewed Siji as mostly a social organization. And um, I felt like, um, that it was good for her to do so, but I had no connection whatsoever. It's a little bit difficult for non-Chinese speaking people to come into our office. I didn't understand why anyone would want me to be in Suji other than just being a novelty. So he, he was forced to, to do group study every single day by himself. And that really helped him. When I went to Taiwan for the very first time, um, the Suji spirit permeated through everything and everyone I met. And that was extremely important for me. However, um, one of uh, the volunteers asked 
Greg, when he started getting involved, they say, why do you decide to, to come to Ciji? He said, because Ciji changed Sally, and Sally changed me. It's our tradition, our family will hug each other in the morning. That's the first thing we do. And to appreciate, we are still living, we, we have each other. Greg Tilowski took charge of the English volunteer training program in Santa Rosa since joining in 2009. It takes place four to six times a year. My role is that I marry a Caucasian. How do I bring in these two cultures together? It was always my biggest homework. It sucks on that, but we can have them. What happens if we have them line up over here and then walk around? So yesterday, I was trying to bring in Western culture to the Tsiji office. So that's what I'm doing. I like to be the bridge for these two cultures. So I came down from uh, Nevada City, California, and uh, it was four. It was a four-hour trip. I've been volunteering with Suchi for a couple years, and um, this is my first uh, English training um, meeting. I just loved what we did, and I ever since this is my second year. Uh, for the teaching and going to the seminars, and I just love it. The entire leadership of the United States and Siji is Taiwanese immigrants. In 25 years, who is going to be filling those roles? It won't be people born in Taiwan. It'll be people born in the United States. You guys are really, really valuable because you don't have any heavy accents. And as soon as she starts speaking, they go, oh, Siji is an American charity. 90% of the people in that room were Americans. However, they looked Asian. So all of these people that are younger, they, just like myself, have a bridge. They are the bridge to back to Taiwan. Well, Master always says that, like, if we want to have a change in this world, America needs to wake up, right? I'm non-Chinese, but I'm learning, so I always say, ni hao, ni hao ma. You know, my interpretation of how things were going to be was, you know, English-oriented. I haven't felt like that's the case. Whoever comes into our door, all we want to do is shower them with city culture. We totally ignore their need and their feelings. They are not feeling welcome, but they feel like they are one of the customers being harassed. I see it, you know, and hear it from other people who might come once, and it's just more emphasis on what I'm wearing and how I'm acting than who I'm helping and how I'm developing. People come in here, they want to be part of the family. We treat them like family, not we don't treat them like Americans. How can you marry somebody who speaks a different language? I say, I'm not marrying to American, I'm married to Greg. If, if I did not find Master, if Sally did not introduce me to her, uh, I would probably be very unhealthy, and I would probably, I'm not sure if we'd be married anymore. I know that I would not be the person I am today, absolutely not. And uh, that's the whole point. The whole point is, in Siji, you're in this organization surrounded by amazing people. Uh, I'm very, very grateful every second that I'm in Siji. My name is Greg Tulaski. I'm an American, I'm an Orthodox Christian, and I'm a Siji volunteer. While Greg is working hard to guide adult non-Taiwanese and non-Mandarin speaking volunteers, there are still even more groups that need attention. So in Santa Ana, California, one volunteer, Elaine Villaverde, has encouraged the spirit of giving to the students at her school and with surprising results. Let's take a look. Elaine is an American volunteer. Her mom is a third generation Chinese immigrant and her dad is a Mexican American. She doesn't speak any Chinese, but has had a deep relationship with her mother. After her passing, Elaine sought the comfort of her Chinese roots. Uh, I teach in Santa Ana at Lincoln Elementary School. And one day, uh, new school year, new principal, I see a Chinese lady in the office, which is very unusual. That's Emily. She's with the Sushi Foundation. In Santa Ana, 99% all Mexicans and nurses She's the lady from Ciji and giving us 60 backpacks. And then they pack the backpacks with all of the food items. And once a week, every Friday afternoon, the children go home with a backpack full of food. 
So Lord. we're very thankful You're that welcome. she's here. I would love to help with the program. She volunteered to help me. She says, uh, my, I'm teaching fifth grade. Um, I have 30 students every Thursday came in to help me pack the, the food in the backpack. Okay, who's helping with Happy Campus? Me. Grab some bags. I'll meet you in the NPR. So my students pick them up daily, and then on Thursdays, we take all the backpacks to the multi-purpose room, and we meet Emily and all the other uh, Tsuchi volunteers. We arrange all the food on the tables. We count all the bags. We count the food on the tables. Then we get the backpacks and put the food inside and lay them down over there for the people in Hamping Campus. Because it's for the people that don't, don't, they can't afford food for the weekend so they can eat. Getting ready for distribution on Friday. A few of the volunteers who will get in trouble during the day, they wouldn't do their homework or they would misbehave but something inside me told me, never take away Happy Campus. That's almost gonna make me, me emotional right now. I, would, I could bench them, I could take away recess, but some things I just never wanted to take away Happy Campus. They were the best. They, they guide the little schoolmates, and they feel very proud to be part of us. And one of my students from last year gone on to another school, and she said, I love helping Tsuchi because it makes me feel like I'm a good person. And I thought, perfect. That's what I want them to feel. So last year, we have the 24 students from the fifth class, and uh, they are special class. So we are here, and we're down with uh, Elaine. We sang a song uh, to the volunteers, the Tsuchi volunteers, to thank them and tell them how much we love them. And the boys started sobbing. The girls were crying. They were hugging each other, and, and I'd never seen children do that. And that was just so special to me to see that I know there was a change. So uh, I love the fact that, that these kids get to meet some of the Tsuchi volunteers. Their selflessness and their, their desire to just help, help someone else. Maybe one day I can find some volunteer like Yiling in every school, then we can expand our Happy Campus program in 63 schools in Santa Ana. My name is Elaine Villaverde. I am Chinese Mexican American, and this November I'm going to become a Tsuchi commissioner. We have one here. While Elaine has plans to solidify her commitment on the West Coast, we've got some equally inspired volunteers here in the East. After Hurricane Sandy, Mark Romain found his volunteer calling at the New Jersey chapter office, and guess where? On Google. Since then, he, his wife, and niece have made room in their busy lives to contribute to the food pantry program there. So let's see what's on their menu. Good morning, Ken. Good morning, Dina. Namaste. Everybody ready for a massage today? My name is Mark Romain, All right. and I provide uh, therapeutic massage. When I was about 16 years old, I started becoming uh, interested in questioning the world around me. And uh, for many years, I practiced Buddhism. I had a conversation with my girlfriend at the time, who I ended up marrying. My name is Ellen, and I'm a nurse. There's not too much Buddhism growing up. <laughs> I wanted to be in communion with other people that uh, practice Buddhism. So I just went on the internet, the famous internet, and I looked up uh, 
Buddhism organizations in New Jersey, and I found Suchi. When I read uh, Master Chenyan's biography, it changed my life, and I just knew I wanted to be a part of it. I had a half day of work, and I, I went to the building, and I was hoping to help out, because we had just been uh, it was Hurricane Sandy in New Jersey. We were prepared for the uh, Sandy Hurricane to do the distributions, and uh, it was a raining day. I knocked on the door, rang the bell, people let me in. He walked in and he said he uh, Google looking for Buddhism uh, organization in New Jersey. They said, you could jump right in. We have plenty of work for volunteers. He has the volunteer form filled out already. Yeah, so I think he's ready and he's the one um, we are looking for. Within three months, I was working at the food pantry. How are you today? It's very uniting for a husband and wife to carry a weight with each other. There's a lot of different opportunities. I can use my nursing here. I, I can do the food pantry here. I welcome people and I have helped them to sign in. Being here, you learn a, I've learned a lot from them as well as I've learned a lot about myself too. It's amazing. It's really amazing. Um, my niece also has come on several occasions. My aunt and uncle are very outgoing people, so they're, they're always doing weird stuff sometimes. I go to school, I study, I play sports, I go to work, and I also volunteer. It's really busy, it's hard, but I always try. To see those people's faces once you give them the food or something, like, I don't know, it's just something that inside you know it's right. Most of the, the clients also speak English, so we really, you know, appreciate. They, they help us a lot and always give us the support. A lot of the people do also speak English, so that helps too. <laughs> I don't always understand everything that they say. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, we do have a lot of rules. <laughs> the uniform, the white pants, I said, you can really get those dirty easy. I remember one day I was sitting and I had my legs crossed, and they're like, no, no, no. And I'm like, okay. But then that shows how much uh, dedication you have. When we have lunch together, everybody brings something. When we, you know, finish the job and we went to eat, it's a different food. Then I can see, you know, how much they enjoy it. Oh, I love the Chinese food. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm free, I call my uncle and I'm just like, I, I want to go. I'm, I'm free tomorrow. I can finally get to go. I knew my mission in life was to do this. And sometimes you just have a, a real feeling where everything's lining up and you know you're doing the right thing. I'm not Buddhist, but I do read some of the books that they have. And I don't know, I was really intrigued in it. I was actually thinking of becoming Buddhist. My name is Mark Romain, and I'm a Suchi volunteer. Ellen Romain, I'm from New Jersey. I'm a Christian, and I'm a Suchi volunteer. Michelle Natale, I'm 15 years old. I'm from New Jersey, and I'm a Suchi volunteer. Mark and Ellen's sacrifice and dedication are among many that you'll see in Suchi USA's diverse faces. So what is the hope for the growth of Tsuji? It's volunteers like the ones you've seen today, and just think, you could be one of them. I'm Dilbrash Adderson, thanks for joining me this time, and I'll see you soon.